Hello ladies, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to Homemakers Radio. I hope you will enjoy your home, enjoy doing all the uh, repetitive things while you listen. It's always nice to have something to listen to. I have my favorite things and I love to watch other people's videos but it takes time to stop and look so I find I need something to listen to and maybe this will help you too. I'm Mrs. Sherman and I have a post that I am placing this video on and I will provide the link to it in the description box if you'd like to go over there and leave a comment. I don't have comments on the channel. I'm just trying to get everything down to one place that I have to deal with and not have too much going on on the internet. But before you go about your work, I want to share my teacup with you. This came from Home Goods and it's by Stetch Call China and uh, it looks like a peony or peony it's very pretty isn't it haven't even used it but they had one left uh, sometimes I can get there and they will have four or five or six of these of whatever the new one is but I just think it's so cheerful so I wanted to share that with you today get on down to home goods and see what they have I noticed they had a lot of very nice blue cups down there but I thought I better leave them for someone else and so today I would like to welcome you to homemakers radio and please try to leave a comment if you can and I appreciate all of you coming it's such an honor to be here you know you don't have to go to a ladies seminar you don't have to leave your home you don't have to pay a great deal to travel somewhere somewhere special and many people are really concerned about being uh, isolated and you know uh, in the current um, war and uh, captivity that they feel are really concerned about that but just think you can stay in the comfort of your own home and listen to uh, something that you might have had to pay a lot for <laughs> when you go. I had been to some of these ladies uh, Christian seminars and been very disappointed in some of them because not one size fits all and it doesn't suit everyone because not everyone is the same. And so it's really nice if you can find something to listen to while you get something done at home. And I know you don't like to neglect your home, so it's really good. This is such a great era. We can use this tool in so many ways. Now today I'm going to read a scripture to you, and this is going to mean a lot to you. And I wish I had looked up the word anxiety, but I didn't. Uh, but I know what it is, and I'm sure you know what it is. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Now, a man's heart is means mankind, means human beings, and not uh, it doesn't necessarily mean the male. It means everybody. Uh, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, and it's just generally speaking, but a good word makes him glad. Now, everybody goes through this anxiety thing, and particularly it shouldn't be in the home, but it is, and I'm sorry to say, you know, that's just part of it. Uh, you're going to have a laundry room piled up and you're going to look at it and it's just going to make your chest constrict <laughs> and your breathing stop. Uh, but uh, a good word, it says, makes him glad. And so if you can think, now it's not a word, just one word, but a good word means uh, put in a good word for me. You know, say something good. And that's what it means. So if you can think of good things, good things whenever you get a negative anxious thought or a piece of news that so gives you so much anxiety you've got to have the you've got to balance it with a good word so you can collect good words in your mind and one of the things I did uh, yesterday is I got myself a blank art book here and it says it's mixed media so you could use crayons drawing painting any kind of media you wanted to but I also thought it'd be good for writing I put everything in here I might even put my schedule but that way I can have everything in one place and so I thought about these substitute thoughts and these substitute a good word substitute good thoughts it just means uh, say something good and uh, so I'm going to start collecting them and writing them down and then when this anxious news comes you know I have a 
a ladies Bible class uh, fellowship every week and they come of course they come in talking about the latest um, shutdown or the latest restriction or whatever and I have to really uh, get myself thinking on the bright side before I can really serve them the way that I want to and so good words we need to learn to substitute them automatically and don't dwell on the anxiety all day long give yourself a good word one of the things that I did recently which might help you I don't know is I've said make a list because a list can can focus you and balance your mind and at least you'll know what you have to do in the home but one of the things that I did was I took some real things from my list and I piled them up I had a book I wanted to look at and then I had a piece of fabric I wanted to use to work on and put the fabric there put the book there and I put a dish there that I wanted I had I bought a little pie dish about so big and wanted to make a tiny little pie so I just stick, made this stack of actual things so that I used as I used them the pile got smaller and it was all done now today before you go I want to make sure that you are dressed and you are ready to go some of you get tired of hearing that but sometimes I think one uh, that we feel anxious at least I do and not everyone is the same uh, is we don't feel prepared because if your feet hit the floor in the morning and you see something that needs to be done you just automatically do it and uh, don't feel prepared and then somebody wants something somebody needs something that only you can do and uh, the resentment can mount because you, you just don't feel mentally prepared and I think it's very hard on people in the home to ask them to do something when they haven't had time to think it through when they haven't had time to think about it so I never demanded my kids you know jump up and do something because I said in a few minutes uh, I would really like for you to go do this but I want you to think it through I don't want you to just charge over there and do it I want you to see yourself making some steps to and thinking how you're going to fix it or how you're going to put it away I want you to think about it and make a little plan in your mind and go and do it so that they don't so they wouldn't charge into something and do it wrong and uh, maybe even have an accident and I, that's just me um, some people think differently about this but we have to teach our children how to think and how to reason but I liked to prepare them ahead of time instead of saying uh, do this you know like they were uh, robots you know so th because that also can frustrate the parents when they meet resistance because sometimes when I'm uh, somebody seems to be putting demands on me uh, whether it's the public or whatever I I have an inner uh, feeling of panic because I'm not prepared I, I, I have to get my mind prepared and so sometimes it's easier to tell somebody I, I'd like this done but I want you to think about it and how, about how you would do it I don't want you rushing into it and so it's the same with us I think was we need to think about it we need to make plans for it and that's what I did uh, in making this little stack of I also think I, I had a little basket that needed to be spray painted and I set that on top and then I just worked through my pile all day and so I just thought I would share that with you because maybe it'd give you an idea and so what, some of the things that we can do at home if you are isolated if you have been restricted uh, in some way to your home even if uh, even if we weren't in a war uh, a war against us uh, sometimes you know as a mother of course you're going to be at home more with maybe sick children or just because of weather and there's so much that you can do and I was trying to make a list of it the other day and I ran across this uh, list of 30 things to do and they were things like um, how long has it been since you've repainted your cabinets how long has it been since you have uh, cleaned out all your kitchen things and do you know where uh, your the pictures of your family are and is it clean under your sink and is your porch clean and it just made all these this long long list and of course it was all work mostly cleaning but there are other things that you can do too 
uh, when you have been confined to home and, and just use it as an opportunity to rearrange, repaint, remodel. Uh, you can learn new things too, like art, sewing, and writing. And some of the things that I am learning is I'm going back to the uh, adult learner's book for uh, music and learning that. And then I have found, well, I'm going through all my books. I'm trying to get those organized better. Life just got in the way of keep of keeping things neat and tidy sometimes. And uh, so now I'm going back and doing this. But here's one that I want to do. And I'm going to do it in my, my book here. Um, how to draw flowers. I got this when the children were younger so that they could have some basic basic uh, ideas of how to do something. And it shows in the beginning the basic shapes that you have to learn. And then it shows how to draw a tulip. Now what you can do, I found, is you can take a piece of blank paper and put it over the page. This is by Watermill Press and I believe we probably bought it uh, in a homeschool book or through Dover or something like that. Um, no, it didn't. I'm not sure where we got it, but you can put a blank piece of paper over it and trace around if you can't, if you don't think you can get the circles and the shapes right. And it just takes you through. And I think it's really important that we all know something about drawing because I don't know how many times children have asked me uh, to draw for just draw them something. And so then I have how to draw baby animals. So I'm going to put that in my book too. I'm going to learn how to draw it. And once again, they used they used shapes. Uh, uh, how to about draw a chicken? <laughs> they used shapes, and you know they show how to start with a circle and well that's good and uh, just different different animals and they're babies baby animals the baby lamb a baby cow etc I might try that I bought them for my children but many times uh, had to just let them look at them themselves because I didn't have time to really sit down with them and then I found how to draw trucks and cars how many times has someone asked you to draw them a, tr a car or a truck so it has everything in here it has the bulldozer it has the it has the 18 wheeler, it has the low bed, it has the dump truck, and so um, this is one that I saved that one of them did from here. So now also we want to go on into your home routine and make yourself do some things. This is after you're dressed, after you have fixed your hair and you look like you're, you mean business, I always suggest getting some really nice uh, bib, bib style aprons and wearing them uh, around the house because it makes you feel like you're uh, at a job. And although we are at a job, we're also in our home. We sleep, we sleep where we work, we rest where we work, we vacation where we work. Uh, everything we do is where we work. It's not like someone else, you know, that comes home after work we're working here and today many people are working at home so that's why it's even more important to dress up and to keep some kind of formality in the home by keeping it neat and tidy and making it a serious place to be although it's also our leisurely place to be so there are many challenges for people who feel isolated or feel that they have because even if there wasn't a uh, war going on uh, and we weren't in captivity off and on at the whims of these crazy people. Uh, even if there wasn't, if you're a homemaker in your home and your enterprise is in your home, you're going to have the same problems. And that is a feeling of restlessness. And I have uh, suggested that if you feel restless at home and you've been used to getting in the car and going somewhere, to at least try a day completely without... Um, leaving the property, leaving the, your home. I'm not saying don't go for a walk, but, uh, and then try it to two days and keep a little diary of how you feel. When, when did the, uh, the restlessness come? When did you feel anxiety? And just keep a diary of it. I think you could write a beautiful book called A Year at Home <laughs> and uh, you could uh, self-publish it. And so there are so many things. I have seen, I saw somebody 
had grown some plants, uh, vegetables, and they just grown started in the little starter plants, in the little seed pots, and had made so many extras that they put them out on a table by the uh, curb and and just wrote free but people were coming to the door to give them money for it because they were so grateful that they had these these uh, cucumbers and tomato plants so there are just so many ideas of enterprise that you could do you know there's an old saying find a need and fill it and the world will be the path to your door well maybe not the world but you only need a few you only need a few people and this is how I feel about uh, Homemakers Radio. I don't need the whole world. And I get these letters telling me I could increase my um, viewership and I could uh, get a lot more hits. But really, I don't really need that. I'm doing this as a record for my downline, for my descendants. And I'm sharing it with you also. In the end, the only people that will really, um, will really value it will be my own people and also there will just be a few because I could only get a few of you here anyway if it was a, a reality and so today I'm also going to read to you I want to remind you one thing about the afternoon lag and about how homemakers have to be really careful to stop and rest after each physical activity you know uh, in the commercial world they have laws they have to follow and they have to give you so many breaks per day and it has to be 10 minutes but at home we forget to do that so I think we should try to stop after every uh, physical exertion at home anything that you've had to do any kind of work at home you should give yourself a little time to recover and that's that's when they used to do their their reading or they would write a letter or they just enjoy um, sitting and looking out the window and enjoying uh, the sounds of things. I challenged you last time I was here to listen to something. Just go outside and listen to something. Well, today I want to challenge you to, if you can't go outside, at least look. Look for something. And today I went outside to put the water on the south lawn and uh, the garden. And as I was walking back into the house, I saw a dove fly up into a tree. And it was just like so many of the paintings I've seen. It's very hard to capture it on photograph. But I have seen these doves, you know, on the wires or just on the ground eating grain. But they don't let you get too close to them. And, of course, you really can't see their beauty till they spread their wings and fly. And I got to see, I got to hear the flutter, and I got to see the dove fly up into the uh, maple tree. And uh, it didn't hide, you know, in the boughs. It was just sitting there, and I got to see the whole thing. And I felt so blessed. And also, I think uh, your anxiety will be a lot less if you go out and look for something beautiful look for something or be grateful for something maybe your trees are all bare maybe it's the dead of winter but you can find something you can you can look at that beautiful mist at the beginning of the day or at the dusk and and say something beautiful about it and be grateful for it now i'm going to read to you a little bit from um beautiful girlhood and it was written by i'm forgotten who uh who originally wrote it somebody was it Margaret Hale or somebody Hale and uh, this was re rewritten by Karen Andreola which some of these older books they have to be revised a little so we can understand them because of the the peculiar way that they uh, read at the time you know in the Victorian times so this chapter that I'm going to read is called Home Life, and I'm going to address it to both boys and girls. I'm not sure if there is a boyhood counterpart book. The only one that I found was Man in Demand by uh, Wayne Hunter, and the other one was the American Boys Handy Book. Those are both good books, but um, the, American, the um, Man in Demand was particularly good for manners. So, and there are other manners books for boys. And I would like to, I didn't bring uh, the material with me, but I was reading Victorian manners for men last time. 
and I uh, wanted to continue that and one of the one of the uh, I guess courtesies that they had to observe was you never um, presumed to be someone's friend unless you had been introduced properly or and that you didn't just drop by their house and particularly with women um, you had to be really careful to have someone with you and I think that it should be suffice for today too I if I had brought my my book with me I could have read more to you but uh, I know there's been a big drive to for women have been really attracted to etiquette classes and manners classes and everything but we also need to teach the boys and we also need to know what sh the men should be expected to do uh, or how they should behave because if we don't uh, they probably won't read it but um, it's very important um, it's all about propriety, meaning the proper thing to do. So home life. This is chapter 18 of Beautiful Girlhood. Not every language has a word equivalent to the English word home, but instead uses a word meaning about the same as house. And I have told you before that house and home in the Bible were interchangeable. Um, someone's house was all uh, the house of, you know, someone like the house of Jacob not only meant his uh, relatives and his descendants and his ancestors, but it also meant the place that he lived, the, the dwelling. How much more the thought of home brings to our minds than merely the thought of the house in which we live. The beloved ones sitting there and our associations with each other, our hopes, fears, and joys and sorrows all mingle together in one place of rest and sweet communion home. Sadly, because of media, because of movies, because of oh, uh, publications, it's easy to look at the world out there and people out there and famous people as being more important than your own home. But you are the stars in your home and they are more important than, than trying to impress anybody else and trying to be like anybody else. Your home is where the stars really are. Home is a kind of kingdom with rulers, laws, and subjects, each with a part to perform in order that life there shall be perfect, or at least the best it can be. The form of government of the home is the oldest known on earth. Here the father is the head. He divides almost equally his authority with the mother, and they govern together in their little kingdom. This is the only form of government that is suitable for the family, for the children are too young and too inexperienced to make laws for themselves. Not only have the parents the full authority over the family, but upon them rests the responsibility of the family's support and their conduct, and I might add their protection. If they do not properly care for or manage their children, they will suffer reproach. You know, the other thing that I wanted to say is that in, in an attempt to protect and care for our children and keep them healthy, a lot of people will allow someone to, uh, to usurp their authority as parents. They'll let the health department usurp their authority. They will let the public school usurp their authority and take their place in many things that they themselves should be teaching and doing. And uh, we've got to stop outsourcing our families, outsourcing our lives. There, most of the things that, that your family needs can be supplied by the parents. and But the parents uh, and fathers need to know this too. You need to quit looking outside for the, uh, the uh, authority from afar uh, for all your knowledge about things like uh, protection and health and um, knowledge and start looking for definitions yourself. Start researching things. And I've often told people that uh, they're all upset about the latest uh, pharmaceutical that is out and they think they should get it, you know, and the government's recommending it and all this. I say, well, first of all, Research it. Find out what the ingredients are. You know, when you go uh, to get something that you need for cooking and it, it, maybe it's packaged, you'll read on the outside to see what the ingredients are. And if it, there's any more than four ingredients, you don't want it because it's always got this fake stuff in it. A lot of extra salt and sugar, that sort of thing. 
you want to read the ingredients on any pharmaceutical. You can look it up now. It's all open to the public. You can see what the ingredients are. Then you can go look up the ingredients by simple ingredient and then find out what effect and side effect it has on the human body. And I've often asked them, if you think that is great to have that inserted into your body, then you need to say, would I put it on a spoon and eat it? And uh, there is an old saying, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And fathers especially need to, sometimes uh, I think the men are so busy and so busy trying to earn a living that they think that the society is going to supply all the other decision making. So they look to the, uh, uh, they look to the uh, official, you know, this or that to, to provide the things for their children and they'll just put their children in this and this and this and this or uh, medicine and that sort of thing. But that's not necessarily wise and so I would say also look for uh, what are the consequences uh, of anything that you take even a food how can it alter your body and alter your life and what are the negative effects and really research it yourself instead of turning your children over to what um, the state tells you that you need to do they don't know they don't care about your children they don't know how to raise them but they would like to they they think they're pretty important they're going to uh, make a lot of money off of them to be able to fit into the home life and submit to the home government is one of the most noble traits of young girlhood and I will say boyhood this is not always accomplished without a struggle for young people can be fickle and changing all the time and they find in many instances they would take a different course from what their parents are taking than what seems most needful to them they want to do many things of which uh, the parents will not approve and will not permit and require of them what is irksome and hard they feel they are being pressed into a mold that does not fit while their whole heart cries out for freedom to come and go and do as they please. Now, one of the things that I have noticed that people will do is when you say, uh, let's say their uh, their doctor wants, I, I'm using this as an example, not saying young people do this, but their doctor wants them to cut down on um, on wheat, wheat flour, wheat products. And instead of researching this and saying, okay, what are some of the side effects of too much wheat and why uh, would it be beneficial for me not to eat so much of it? They'll say, what am I supposed to eat? Okay, that's like saying, okay, you're taking away my food. There isn't anything else. And it's a rebellious nature uh, and tone that that comes in. And young people will do this too when you say, I don't want you out going to the movies with the other uh, people your age. There, uh, I can, you know, and you've, you've provided something that is equally as good and better and safer, and it's at home or it's with the family. Uh, and a lot of parents go to a lot of trouble to provide these things for their family to prevent them having, uh, prevent them going with the world. And so they tell them you uh i'd really i want you to do it at home and we'll have something better we'll have a great uh something that's more beneficial and the young man or young woman will say well what am i supposed to do with my life or what am i supposed to do with my spare time and um you know they're not addressing this is a a rabbit trail because they get the parent talking about what they're supposed to do and they're not saying so when someone says to you you know I want you to not eat so much many wheat products say okay um, well why ask why okay what's wrong with the wheat products okay so what would be the what would be the better thing it's like you tell your daughter I don't want you to go dancing now when we were growing up we were not allowed and the church members didn't dance and uh, so if they said we don't want you dancing we were curious why what's wrong with it and we we would be all saucer eyed listening to all, all the things that could happen as a result of dedicating your time to going to dances and they would tell us and then they would show us scriptures in the bible that uh, 
forbid some of the things that happened as a result of dancing. Um, and I'm not talking about uh, certain types of dancing that, uh, it's talking about modern dancing. And so we were curious about it, but the modern would say, uh, you just don't want me to go anywhere and get them started on that instead of just, it's the same with modesty. You'll say, uh, you're, I want your dress to be a little longer. I'd like for your, your neckline to be a little higher. They'll say, well, what am I supposed to wear? You know, and instead of asking, okay, why? Why is that? Tell me why. What's wrong with it? And and really listening, they uh, want to distract you with this uh, attitude of uh, you don't want me to do anything. And so this is rebellion. This attitude is rebellion. So so I'm going to read some more of this chapter on the home. The young daughter in the home has it in her power to make home a sweet, comfortable place to live where laughter and sunshine will cheer the cloudiest day, or she may turn all of its pleasures to bitterness and bring sorrow and heartache. Well, I have <laughs> grandchildren that use the time of the day uh, when when they can sense that the family is getting a little bit glum or maybe the sun is not shining. They'll plan a, a quick uh, pick-me-up party. <laughs> in the home and start baking something or or figure out something to to do and or start start playing their instruments or start singing and this always cheers everyone up if she can submit to her parents and be kind and thoughtful she is a constant comfort but if she's always contending and arguing speaking up in a disrespectful manner when she is crossed or scolding or quarreling with the younger children she makes home unbearable you know she also can traumatize the little kids you know when they when they have these and the boys too when they have an outburst they're disturbing the peace of the home which i believe is that god has given and that he doesn't smile lightly on that and uh they'll reap what they sow I, i've always thought it was terrible uh, the way people, when I started homeschooling, you know, we were happy. We were, the children were content. Um, we, uh, their eyes glowed. They were healthy. They, they weren't disturbed teenagers like other people's kids were that went to um, years and years and years of public school. And I'm not saying that everyone that went to public school was like that, but they could, people could see the difference. So when they were around us, for some reason, they wanted to start an argument to see if our kids would pick up on it or if they they get our whole family arguing and then they then they could say that we were a sham and that uh we weren't what we pretended to be portended to be so a girl should have her full share of responsibility in the home she should go about her work willingly not as if it were an irksome duty which she is ill disposed to perform she should count herself one of the family one of the children having only equal rights and privileges with the rest any girl who will speak disrespectfully either to or of her father is lacking in one of the first principles of real womanhood. She should always respect her father's right to direct her life and to say what he wants. His word to her should be final. His approval should be considered a blessing. Now that's not to say, you know, we had good uh, relationships with our children and their father. He never had to lay down the law or command anything because they loved him from the start and uh, and uh, he was gentle and he could uh, persuade them and and uh, explain things and uh, he he didn't have to there was never any kind of friction or a war going on uh, sometimes when i read this book i sense that uh, there there is a a friction going on you know between the parents and the children it doesn't necessarily have to be that way Mothers must look after so many details of her daughter's life that her overseeing may seem bothersome sometimes. There is a certain time in a girl's life when a mother has to be responsible for how her daughter arranges her hair or wears her clothes or where or her whereabouts or who she's with. 
Not only in childhood does the girl need this oversight, but while she is in her teens also. You know, uh, what we found with uh, homeschooling is that they didn't have any desire to have uh, to run off with anybody or with friends because uh, everything was so good at home. We did have friends over, but uh, they could never tempt them away. And, uh, and we did have to listen to some of the, them the way they talk. And we even heard some people say that were visiting with their families. Um, they'd kind of uh, look around at how, how coordinated we were. We were, um, we were harmonious. We liked the same things. We laughed at the same things. We were working on the same things. Um, we enjoyed our home. And uh, they'd say, don't you ever want... I, an adult said this. It was, a, it was a reporter that came to our home one time for some reason. Uh, she became acquainted with our family. And she came to visit. We had her for tea. And she was a local reporter. And uh, so she looked at my daughter and she said, don't you ever just want to run away? <laughs> She says, don't you ever just want to rebel? And uh, my daughter was so shocked. She said, no, why would I? But this is, you know, the world is out there uh, from the moment the child is born trying to get that child uh, unbonded from you. Um, have you ever seen the ideal big sister? She is ever ready to kiss away the bumps and bruises of little heads and hurts. She knows just how to mend broken dolls. She likes to pop corn and make pancakes for little people to eat. She knows such wonderful stories to tell or read. She will pick up and put out of sight those evidences of childish neglect that might bring little people into trouble. She understands and is a companion for every one of them. Yet many homes have just such older daughters as that. The girl who is learning day by day to be a good daughter at home and a good sister to the younger children is also learning day by day how to eventually be a good wife and good mother. She is getting ready for one of the greatest works a woman can do. Making a good true home for somebody is truly a beautiful profession. And I thought about the the, the older daughter and the children and I, I watched this many times uh, with families where the little ones neglect and leave something out that a uh, father could trip on uh, or slip on. And so when the others see it, they scramble to pick it up, you know. And uh, I think that that is really good. We have each other's backs at home. I also think it's really good to keep unentangled with uh, too many people outside of your own family and your own home because it seems like uh, if it were a normal friendship and it's someone that you grew up with and they don't put demands on you it's okay but sometimes when you're making friends in your adult life and this goes for girls too is that uh, these these people think that you should work on the friendship therefore you should get together often and you should also communicate a lot and you should also be doing things for each other a lot and put sometimes it might put a burden on someone whose life is at a different stage and they have more uh, responsibilities at home so keep yourself unentangled uh, with others and if they are really good friends they'll understand when you're silent and when you haven't had much time for them they'll understand the demands of your if they're good homemakers too they'll understand the demands on your time and for the home do as much as you can uh, while you can and don't worry uh, if you cannot get it all done no home is ever completely done and one of the things that we can do is to have free tables where we can declutter and get rid of things we're not going to use anymore. Sometimes things do accumulate, not for our own fault, but because maybe things are broken and we haven't gotten rid of them. And I've noticed that even things with missing pieces or even lids that are single and the... Um, the little container was long gone, broken, torn, something. Uh, people uh, will pay, take those lids at the free table. They will take furniture that has a broken leg. They will take uh, things with missing knobs on them. They will take anything. So I think a free table does me a lot of good. Maybe it would you too, because if you throw things away, sometimes they end up in the landfill and we're trying to be responsible 
And the other thing is that uh, some things people will take that will really surprise you. There are things you get in the grocery store that come in bottles with a lid. And I have seen people wash those out, put them out on their free table, and they're gone. I don't know what people do with them. I have even had uh, used batteries out there. I don't know what they do with all these things. And also just little bits of things. Uh, uh, just little pieces of things. I'll just go ahead and put it all in a box rather than throw it in the trash. And I'll be so surprised when that is gone. I don't know what people are doing with these things, but there are some people that just like to um, make things do, fix things, or get a hold of used things and recreate them. And so this helps them a lot. A lot of people also take stuff from the free tables and they start their own little shop in their front yard or backyard or whatever and they sell it. It doesn't matter to me if they want to sell it um, because it helps them. So ladies, I hope that this has been helpful today and I wish that I had brought my list of uh, Victorian manners for men, but we'll do that next time. And so in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely day and I hope you get a lot done. And today, uh, before I leave I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'll tell you what I did before I came here and I was always thinking I've got I want to go and talk to everyone but you know there's just one thing after another and so today what I did is I I tidied up my living room that's my front room it comes uh, right you open the door and you're right there there's no hallway there's no entryway it, you're just there so I try to keep that one at least available so people could sit down if they should come in here. I try to keep it free and uncluttered. I'm not always successful. And then I decluttered the dining room area and I watered the south uh, grass on the south lawn and watered the garden and I hung the towels on the line and I put out the free table and now what I have left to do is I've got to go over and to the church building and um, get get the tables ready for the dinner that we're going to have and the um, then I have to order my weekly um, imperfect foods order which I really enjoy getting I never spend more than about $25 on it unless I'm having um, company and then I'll spend a lot more but I enjoy it comes to the door it has a freezer pack in it it has fresh food and then I'm going to clean my kitchen. I'm going to uh, send out some mail. I try to do that a little bit every day. I've got some sewing to uh, put away. And so I hope that uh, you got a few things done. I always enjoy your list too. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.